Have a look at this fella. If you didn't know any better, you'd be excused for thinking that this fella here is a little mouse dipped in cotton candy. He's adorable, but he's actually a marsupial, a possum to be exact. So today, we're going to be talking about the Western Pygmy Possum. Stick around, guys. G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And today we're talking about the Western Pygmy Possum. I'm here east of Adelaide with Wildlife SA, a group of wildlife carers out here. And some of the animals they have in care are these guys, Western Pygmy Possums. And they're adorable. Now, the Western Pygmy Possum is just one of five different Pygmy Possums. On one end, you've got the Mountain Pygmy Possum, who's actually in a genus all of his own. On the other hand, you've got the Western Pygmy Possum, the Eastern Pygmy Possum, the Long-Tailed Pygmy Possum, and the Tasmanian Pygmy Possum, who is the smallest of all possum species, even smaller than this little fellow. Now, while there is five species and there is a fair bit of variety amongst them, genetic studies have shown that the Western Pygmy Possum's closest cousin is the Eastern Pygmy Possum. One of the major differences with this guy compared to his four other relatives is while they're generally a combination of sort of browns and greys, these guys here have this gorgeous cinnamon colour. Now, as you might guess from their name, Western Pygmy Possum, you can find these guys in the southwestern corner of Western Australia, but they also push across here into South Australia, and they're even found in Western Victoria, where I'm from. So they've got a pretty diverse range across the southern part of the country. Throughout that range, they're generally inhabiting places like arid woodlands, shrublands, and heathlands. But there's actually a really big divide between the eastern and western populations. However, despite the fact that they've been separated by the Nullarbor Plain for a very long time, there's even fossils of these guys on the Nullarbor Plain from once upon a time when there was, of course, trees out there. The genetic differences between both populations aren't big enough that we still consider them to be one species. Throughout these heathland and shrubland environments, these guys are living mostly off pollen and nectar. They're nectivorous. So they're going around and feeding on things like crevillias and banksias in this range. During the day, they're taking shelter in sort of crevices and uh, disused bird nests, tight hollows, places where they can cram themselves in and a predator can't keep in and after them. When it's cold, these guys are really particularly interesting. They actually go into torpor, which is kind of like a basic hibernation or a short-term hibernation to save energy. And you can imagine a guy living off sugar that's only this big needs a fair bit of energy. They stop heating their body and their body temperature will drop to just one degree above ambient temperature. They even slow their respiration to the point where they're only using 1% of the oxygen that they'd normally require. While they're in torpor, these guys are even known to pull their little ears over their eyes and wrap up that prehensile tail under their belly and huddle together to preserve as much of that warmth as they can, use as little energy as possible. These guys really are unique animals. As far as breeding goes, these guys are actually capable of breeding throughout the year, but they generally breed in spring. The reason being is being a flower eater. Their babies as their weans need access to nectar and pollen. And of course, the flowers are most available in the spring after the winter and uh, rains are finished. So most successfully, they're going to be breeding in spring. They have between four and six babies at a time. And this is because female Western Pygmy possums have six nipples, which are in a pouch, just like all female marsupials. She can actually give birth to more embryos than six. But because these babies actually fuse themselves on to these teats at first, only six will ever survive. So she'll have these six babies and they'll spend about 25 days in the pouch. After that, while they might still be blind, she'll leave them in the nest and she'll go around forage and come back and continue to feed them. They're independent by 50 days old and by between 12 and 18 months, they actually sexually mature themselves and can go out and have their own little Western Pygmy Possum families. Thanks to their large distribution, these guys are classified as least concerned. So we don't consider them in any immediate danger of extinction. However, within this range, there are particular environments where they're listed as either endangered, threatened, or even critically endangered. And some of the things that they're subject to includes changed fire regimes, where their bushfires are not hotter than they used to be, and their homes are lost. On top of this, introduced pests like cats and foxes pose a pretty significant threat. So habitat loss uh, for grazing, fires, and introduced pests have eradicated some populations, but fortunately, their distribution also includes large numbers of protected areas. So these guys are hopefully here for a lot longer to come. So with all that in mind, I think we can all agree that this guy has to be a contender for one of the cutest animals we've had in all of our videos thus far. And an animal that most Australians don't know about, but we should all learn about. They're really, really cool animals. And if you have enjoyed this video, I hope you take the time to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and if you could do us a favour and check out Wildlife SA on Facebook. They've been kind enough to come and let us film with some of their animals, and the least we can do is show them our support. 
The last thing I'd get you guys to do though, is if you want to see us travel more, visit more facilities, and bring you more videos of animals that I couldn't show you at home, check us out on Patreon. It's the assistance on Patreon that helps us get new places and show you all these amazing animals. Last of all guys, as always, please be nice to wildlife, have a good one and take care. See you next week. <music>